Hey guys, this is the EC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is a superheat charging chart. Okay, so uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a screenshot of this so that you can use it on your own systems. All right, but what we're doing here is we're going to be doing some superheat charging chart drills. All right, so we're going to take the outdoor temperature, okay, which is the outdoor entering air temp on the condenser coil, maybe about six inches away from the condenser coil, out of the sun. All right, um, and down low, not where the heat's blowing out at, rejecting it out of the top of the outdoor unit. All right, then you're going to take your indoor wet bulb temperature, okay? That will be at your largest return grill in the house there, all right? Uh, and that will be your wet bulb with your psychrometer, okay? Whether that's a sling psychrometer uh, or a digital psychrometer, okay? So let's just take a look here. So we've got, let's just say our outdoor temp is 70 degrees and our indoor wet bulb temp is 60 degrees. All right, so we line that right up, we follow that over, and we find that the target superheat for the system on the large suction line with the blue gauge is 16 degrees of superheat. It's a temperature increase in vapor form. All right, so if we said we, our actual superheat was, say, 7, okay, that would mean that there's too much refrigerant in the system, and you would need to recover that refrigerant. All right, uh, if you had 35 degrees of superheat, then that would mean that you're um, that you're low on refrigerant and then that you would need to add refrigerant to it in order to lower the superheat. All right. Now there's other factors and such, but let's just say the system is running right and the filters are clean and you have the, 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 uh, correct, um, the correct airflow. Okay. So the, let's just go with another one here. Outdoor temperature of 80 degrees. All right, and a indoor wet bulb of 66 degrees. So we're going to follow this 80 degrees over, and we find that our target superheat is 18 degrees of superheat. All right, so that means that our suction line is 18 degrees higher than what our pressure on our blue gauge converted to saturated temp is. All right, so our temperature increase in vapor form of our actual temperature on our suction line minus the saturated temperature on the blue gauge should be 18 degrees of superheat. All right, if it's lower than that, that means there's too much refrigerant. If it's higher than that with superheat, then that means you need to add refrigerant to it, okay? Um, with superheat, you, you know, you just have a piston, all right? Uh, or maybe you have a capillary tube system, okay? So usually when you walk up to the site, you're gonna check to see, to make sure you, if you do have a TXV or if you don't have a TXV, if you don't have a TXV, you have some other type of metering device, either it's a piston or it's capillary tube. All right, you use the superheat charging chart in order to, do, to charge that. But anyway, um, you want to get the piston or orifice charge in superheat very close to the target superheat, okay? Because depending on how, whatever the wet bulb temp is in the house, you know, as the wet bulb temp gets lower and say you fall into this particular outdoor temperature, you know, your superheat could be down real low, like 8 degrees of superheat or 6 degrees. And you want to make sure that you have enough superheat to where you don't have liquid getting back to the compressor. So on a certain day, it might be 18 degrees of superheat on one system. And on another day, at a different indoor wet bulb temp and an outdoor temp, you know, it could be down lower in, in your target superheat. Okay. So you want to really be real close to whatever that is. So if it's 18 degrees of superheat is what the target is. And you want to get to 18 degrees or maybe 17 degrees, all right? You want to get real close to it, okay? And then you can confirm your refrigerant charge with 18 to 21 degree temp difference between the return and supply air, unless there's high humidity in the house, which you might have just a little lower than 18 to 21, all right? Uh, but that's only if you have really high humidity in the house. All right, anyway, so let's do a couple more, um, and then I'll, I'll just give you a screenshot of this at the end here. All right, so let's just say it is 90 degrees outside, and say it's 68 degrees wet bulb. All right, so let's follow this over 90 degrees, and we follow it over and we find 16 degrees of superheat as our target superheat. All right, that's what we need to charge the system to. And let's just do one more. So we'll say it's 65 degrees, which would be probably the lowest temperature that you would want to check a refrigerant charge in. You know, you want to make sure it has at least 65 degrees outside before you start charging an air conditioning system just so there's a load in the house. And let's just say it's 54 degrees wet bulb. All right, so 65 over to 54 degrees wet bulb, we've had, we find that uh, we're looking for a 10 degree superheat. All right, that's our target. All right, anyway, that's how you do it. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.